Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We are going straight into the newspaper headlines this morning. Let's see what we can find. And uh, we will be having a good, great analysis by our guest uh, this morning, Mr. Chris Wandu, publisher of CKN News. Good morning, Mr. Wandu. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's start with the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Let's see what we can um, quickly find here. The big one there says... Prices of food items rise in Kano, Abuja, Lagos, and others. It's a, it's a great thing, you know, to look around the markets in Lagos this morning um, and see, you know, how much difference there is. I, I noticed tomatoes was a little more expensive yesterday. I'm not sure what, you know, has uh, prompted that. Also, what bandits gave us as reasons for abducting 317 Jangebe students? And false scarcity uh, queues resurface in many states. EFCC arraigns ex-BPE DG, Diki, um, over 26 billion Naira PHCN staff severance package. Not very different from Abdul Rashid Mena and uh, the police pension reform um, funds. And now it's a PHCN staff. All right, also this morning on the Nigerian Tribune, federal government launches online portal for COVID-19 vaccination registration. Court slams 50 million Naira damages against EFCC for unlawful arrest. Um, also, Nomosi returns to Jeba Road after military intervention. DSS invites foodstuff and cattle dealers uh, president for questioning. Foodstuff blockade and insult, an empty threat, and a failed project, says Ghani Adams. And also, the North can't claim monopoly over feeding the nation, um, uh, Okeogun farmers are saying. Abduction of students, federal government orders NSCDC to provide security for schools. 20 killed in Tokoto and Kaduna. On fire raises 200 hectares of cocoa plantation in Ekiti State. Congratulations to Ngozi Okonje well as, um, of course, as she resumed work yesterday uh, with her very, very attractive and beautiful Ankara outfit that she put on. So uh, she's also on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Chris Wandu, let's uh, start with, uh, let's go straight to you this morning. Which of the stories would you like to pick up on? Well, I want to start with the major headline uh, um, about the uh, rising prices of food items uh, in some parts of the country, uh, such, uh, especially in the south. And um, uh, being, uh, the reason being that uh, there have been some level of blockade of uh, food items coming in from um, the north to the southern part of Nigeria. To me, that was eight times. Uh, it's an ill wind. That will blow. That will not blow any one of us. Um, well, uh, I see no reason for that. If there's any reason for uh, those uh, the farmers or those in charge in the north, uh, agitated by some of the activities um, in the southwest, there's a much better way to go about it than trying to uh, try to block uh, food items um, from coming from the north to the uh, to the south. It has so many implications. First and foremost, uh, most of these items are perishables, although they say they have been diverted to other part of the um, uh, uh, other countries, Cameroon and the rest of them. Don't they have their own market there? By the time you try to transport it tomatoes from north uh, to Cameroon and other places, do you think it will be easily accepted, accepted at the borders? What of the, they are all perishables and they, they are also going to lose millions and millions of naira. I think this should be resolved. I'm trying to use um, uh, such that this will not work. We are not in a worse situation. By the time you start doing that, and the South also start with their own, uh, those in the, uh, we hearing people saying that, oh, okay, let us go and uh, tighten up the pipelines so that there won't be any level of supply and the rest of them. So, but to me, I, I think this is where the government uh, should come in and intervene. Good enough. I hear that security agencies are trying to do something about it. But I don't think it's the work of the security agencies it should be the work of the federal government. I'm looking at the Minister of um, Agriculture. I'm looking at the Minister of Interior. I'm looking at the minister, other ministers um, who are government officials who should be able to come in as quickly as possible to get this result so that um, supplies can resume. Well, um, there is also, let me just quickly clear. add um, that there is also, you know, I, I saw a few reports yesterday, uh, first of all, from um, Middle Belt farmers who had said that they were not part of any blockade. And they will continue to, you know, sell and transport their goods to the south, south, and southeast, and wherever uh, needed um, um, agricultural produce. 
And there's also a report that I saw yesterday um, uh, detailing how much loss um, northern farmers had uh, suffered in the last uh, 28 to 48, um, 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours. Um, and so, you know, like you, you were saying, you know, it, it's not, you know, something that will benefit them or benefit anybody. Um, but, you know, how stern do you think the government can uh, be at a time like this to ensure that, you know, all of this is not, um, uh, doesn't work? Leadership problem, leadership problem, and leadership problem. That has always been our problem, our, our, our problem here. Our leaders don't, don't tend to do the right thing at the right time. So if we're having this kind of, yeah, it's been, uh, they issued a, a warning um, about a week or so ago, um, threatening to do that. What did the government do? What did the federal government do? Did they engage them? Uh, did they bring some level of, um, uh, did they arrange a meeting between them and um, uh, 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 those of them in the South? Uh, but as I said, it, it, will hurt, it will hurt the South as much as it's hurt the North. But uh, let them not uh, let those in the north not think that uh, there's a monopoly today. There's practically nothing that goes up that they, they are putting up, uh, they are growing in the north, that we're now growing in the south. Uh, it will definitely, it might just take some time, but uh, that can be done. But we shouldn't use such bases, uh, we shouldn't use such things as a, a basis for hosting food supplies and the rest of them. Right. Um, the, the south also has its own uh, comparative advantage when it comes to issues that they send to the north, and if they decide to cut off the supply, what happens? So. Uh, but I think this is where government have to come in, as I said earlier mm -hmm. on, and um, let's get this and right. dusted. Hopefully it's uh, not... Already hopefully, um, at, um, the, yeah. Yes. Well, I was just going to say, hopefully it's not as serious as, you know, it has been um, uh, painted in, in the news. And, um, you know, of course, people would not have to suffer yeah. for, I hope not. for the high-handedness of a few Nigerians. But let's quickly also get you to speak, before we move to another paper, let's uh, speak on the COVID-19 vaccination registration. The government announced this yesterday. Um, earlier, we um, had a conversation. You said you had done your registration. So tell us about that. How, how easy is it? Yes, I went to the portal last night. And um, within, within two minutes, I just got it done. And um, I was issued a, a, a number. And I had the privilege of picking my date, um, picking where I want the um, vaccination to be done as well as um, I was asked certain questions about my head conditions and the rest of them, my age and the date of birth and the rest of them. Very, very comprehensive. Um, that's a good one. Um, uh, kudos to, um, to, the, to those behind it. Uh, but I know, as just everything about Nigeria, it's not just registration. I know that um, uh, with the way our, our leaders go about such things, even with the have picked the date, I doubt if we will be able to get that done. Because what will happen is that once a person comes in, they channel it to their, their families, their friends, and their chronics and the rest of them, that at the end of it, all, for those of us that uh, don't seem to know anybody within the system, I just not be able to get that done, which is not what is happening across the globe. Uh, but we are told that about um, 4 million doses will come in uh, by today, and uh, they've given a, a channel of um, distribution and those that we are going to um, get the first shots. And those in the health sectors, those are above 65, government officials and the rest of them. It is only when they finish with that, that um, I'm sure that they will start looking at people like us. But let us do the needful. Let everybody try as much as possible to get registered. But uh, as you rightly, when we are discussing um, off camera, what will happen to those in the rural villages who don't have access to the internet or who don't have access to be able to get themselves registered, how will they register? Yes. That is the problem. And that is why we have a majority of our people, close to about, I'm sure, about 60, 70 percent of our people are within the rural areas and women not have access to some of these things. So how do they register? Do you mean that if they don't register, they don't get to vaccination? That is something we should be looking at. All right. Okay, Mr. Wandu, let's quickly turn to the Punch newspaper this morning. This one says, Southern states dismiss blockade. North food traders insist on strike. And external reserves dropped by $1.1 billion in one month. NMA faults NPHCDA's registration portal for COVID-19 vaccine. Reps summon Amid Customs Budget Office over duty waivers. Patrol scarcity ploy to hike price, says marketers. And below here on the Punch newspaper, it says Lagos finds, Lagos court finds 100 and 72 arrested at Kubana Nights Club, 6.8 million naira. 
Over 1,000 Ogun refugees now in Benin, villages tell government. Two break into Ogun court and ant apartment, rape 16-year-old daughter. Amnesty, ransom will encourage bandits and kidnapping. And that's according to Peter Obi. Divorce seeking pastor's wife accuses husband of sleeping with members in church. Akira Dulu bans NERTW, RTAN over leadership tussle. And seven northern states shut schools over rising banditry and abductions. All right, Mr. Wando, these are the stories here on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper. Do we begin with this one uh, in the north? Seven northern states shutting down schools over rising banditry and abductions. Uh, just yesterday or so, I think, one of the analysts we had mentioned that if the response of northern governors to this situation is to shut down schools, then the terrorists would have won the war. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's neither here nor there. Um, but first and foremost, um, some news coming in, uh, although we've not been able to fully verify this, that some of the girls that we are uh, adopted uh, in Zampara have been released. Um, we are still having news coming in that um, the governor has stated that some of them have been released, about 270 or thereabouts. And um, if that is true, then that's good news for, for us. Uh, but shutting down schools, um, just because bandits have, have been trying to adopt them and the rest of them, it's not good enough for us. Don't forget that we have a deficit of, uh, in terms of education in the north. And there have been a lot of talk um, to encourage um, students um, to go to school. A lot have been done in the north to encourage them to practically, they practically go to school free, unlike um, those in the south here. Um, the uh, maths are lower uh, for them. Entry requirements are lower for them to encourage them to go to school in the various higher institutions of learning through jams, school sites, and the rest of them or it may be to make sure that they're able to send most of their school, uh, children to school. Uh, we have the problem of Amajari um, ripping, ripping riots uh, in the north. Uh, practically all the young kids are not going to school, rather than running out to the street. So uh, to me, that is a time bomb. Now we're adding that of banditry and kidnapping, which to me is a very, very, very terrible situation. So uh, what we, uh, we need to do is to make sure that um, most of the schools, practically all the schools in the north, are well secured. Uh, but we have the necessary, we have the number of um, 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 security agents to be able to man every school in the north. That is a, a very a big task. Um, but I, I, what we can do, which is why some of us have been advocating for state police and community policing, is this is where they come in play. Um, situation where the police, the conventional police, they cannot be able to handle. Then the community police and the state police can be able to handle and, uh, and take care of these schools. Our security architecture is totally overstretched. The army is overstretched, um, handling Boko Haram and so many levels of insurgency across Nigeria. The police, we have very, very high speed. We have the shortage of police to even man, to man every part of the country. So All right. uh, the, the situation at this is a very, uh, very, very terrible. Are, are, they, are they even equipped more, enough? Uh, All right, just... Sorry? I was asking, are they even equipped enough? Um, even if you have those numbers to man those schools, do we have the police or the NSCDC equipped enough that, against bandits? That, 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 we don't have. We don't have. We don't have. We don't. Okay. So just uh, on that the back of what? We have enough. Uh, so we do more. Okay, so yes, uh, indeed, as uh, Mr. Wandu said, uh, the news reaching us, especially uh, from BBC House, uh, confirms that Governor Billy Metawali of Zamfara State has confirmed that 279 schoolgirls who were abducted from the Government Science College in Jangebe, Zamfara, have been released. And again, that's 279 girls uh, still looking forward to you know, good news regarding the remaining girls. I think in total, 300 117 were kidnapped from that school and still on the front page of the punch newspaper the stories here about club goers you know being arrested from Kubana nightclub and they had to pay 6.8 million uh, naira I don't know if you have any uh, brief thoughts on that before we quickly turn to the next newspaper and I'm sure this will be for breaking COVID-19 protocols you know gathering you know lack of social distancing lack of wearing a face mask and all of that and breaking a curfew also Indeed. Yes. Uh, well, uh, the law is law. Uh, 
um, so anybody breaks the law has to uh, has to hold himself um, accountable um, that was law and banning clubbing in Lagos and also um, asking people uh, with the coffee if you don't know that you stay in place in, in Lagos after 12 midnight and uh, I know some people that are arrested and um, for that so if you are moving around Lagos once it's 12 quickly find where you can stay to the next morning because if you have not, most people are not aware of that uh, so if the if the the club goers um, get, get the arrested well um, they have to the law. Uh, for now, that has not been needed. Even um, uh, social gathering and rest of that to a large number, the state ban in Lagos. So um, I don't see anything <laughs> very, very, <laughs> anything that uh, it sounds the are there. So right. they just repeated. But I think the world is giving it fine. And then they said that um, some of them will be tested for COVID. And if they want to be, there will be an attention. Uh, a lot of them, you know, have been released. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to test all, you know, uh, 172 of them. Um, but it also, you know, tells about the attitude of yes, Nigerians, yes, you know, released, um, know. during a pandemic. You know, regardless of what the government's enforcement is um, at times like this, you know, it also tells that Nigerians sometimes may not, you know, understand, uh, you know, the severity of uh, what we're dealing with. Let's quickly move to the... Um, nation newspapers so what we can also quickly find uh, there as we wait confirmation from zamfara um, about the release of these um, school girls so far 279 is what the story the news says for, for now but would uh, await confirmation before uh, clarifying uh, court remands ex bpe dg uh, dk over one billionaire bribe also gunmen set police stations ablaze in ebony and acquire bomb Bandits killed 10 in attack on uh, Kaduna communities as uh, carried the loose sacks, NURTW and uh, RTEAN from parks. Also, abductors of pupils do it to embarrass government, says Minister. Um, the major one you can see on the nation, PTF, no COVID-19 vaccine for states without facilities. And that's uh, and it's one of the things that we will bring up this morning um, during uh, the discussion. Um, what exactly... Uh, do, um, I mean, do all states across the country have the required facilities to receive this vaccine? So everyone who's registering, you know, across the country, do you think that every state um, and the facilities are available to store and administer these vaccines uh, there? Uh, Chris Wanda, let's, let's have you speak on that quickly. Yes, um, I do know the, the one we are getting. So we have... Uh, 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 various scene uh, that I think we're getting is um, the one that is a bit much, much, uh, uh, is not as competitive uh, as the one that um, we have the US from the beginning. Um, the we're having now is much, much uh, uh, story uh, friendly type uh, where we don't need to put in um, very extreme co condone and rest them. So, but uh, I totally agree with. Uh, PTF. Um, if you don't, a state doesn't the necessary facilities, then why are you collecting the vaccine? Because at the end of it, it will just spoil and um, it will be unusable. So what they need, the state is to, needs to do now is to encourage the state to get give them the guidelines and all the necessary, uh, all the necessary guidelines for them to put, uh, put that in place. And they will go on inspection to make sure they have that. And once they put that in place, once the vaccine comes, they can bet. If that doesn't have it, totally agree that it um, will be sent to the state. But the problem there is that what happened to the people? If for the if the state is not doing what it's up to do, should that also affect the lives of the people? So I think it's a U.S. word, and uh, that we should be very careful in using. All right. Um, Chris Wandu, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks for speaking with us and sharing your thoughts on these uh, big stories. Looking forward to another uh, time when you join us. Yes, and have a Thank great day. Thank you very day. much for having me. Do have me. All right. Two points I'm just going to quickly throw in. First okay. one is, uh, now he's talking about states um, um, and whether they have the facilities on ground to receive and administer these vaccines. It's a great point from the PTF. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm, I'm going to be bothered about now is truly how much healthcare investment each state has been able to put in the last couple of years to ensure that they have the facilities to receive the vaccines. And when you see... The wives of governors going to the United States to take <laughs> vaccines, it really tells the people that if, you know, the worst case happens, that the state doesn't have facilities, the family of the governor is not affected. He's not, it's not, he's not bothered. Indeed. 
his family has taken the vaccine already somewhere in the United States. So anything that you know, the rest of the people want to do, that's their business. Um, and it's going to be very embarrassing and painful to see that play out. I hope it doesn't play out. Second one is, Leah Sharibu is an example of um, the rest of the girls were released, but she was left behind. Indeed. Now that there is one story this morning from BBC House that um, uh, 279, so we have 38 girls still um, unaccounted for. Um, I hope it's not the same thing that plays out with regards to those girls. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, the Zamfara State Governor said negotiations are still ongoing. So we're looking forward to getting more you know, confirmation from Zamfara State and hopefully good news about the return of the other girls. And of all the other points you mentioned, it just goes to show you know, the quality of service that we have, quality of leadership, quality um, leadership of self-interest and not of service, really. I mean, and it's just so, so sad. And I do hope that uh, when the vaccines get into Nigeria, the people who need it most, the healthcare workers, the people who are 68, 65 and above, actually get vaccinated first, regardless of whether you're a politician or oh, no. your status in society, you know, still going back to Zero Discrimination Day that we talked about yesterday, yes. March 1st. Anyway, this is where we draw the curtains and off the press. Let's uh, turn now to Today in History after this break.